So, I think it's about time we go get that antidote. But first, we're going to appreciate the scenery. I mean, how could you not? And also appreciate the O-Face monument we left behind of Carmilla's body. I could do without that. <laughs> well, I, I guess it's a good thing that her body d disappeared then. Uh... Dracula was rather hesitant about letting that dodo go free. Even he seems to realize just how useless they are. I don't know why I didn't fast forward through this part. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. A little bit of asset management never hurt anyone. I mean, just, just imagine how frustrating, you know, the relic system must be for those who didn't pay out for the transmute and absorb DLC. Like, I still don't understand why, you know, aside from just pure greed, why this wasn't part of the main game. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. It's, it, it's bizarre. Sometimes that's all Konami needs as an excuse is greed. I wonder if uh, this particular diary is meant to be a reference to Vincent Valentine. Uh, maybe. I mean, we've, we've already had references to, to Portal, Day of the Tentacle, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, and they're, they're, I, I promise that once we get to the DLC, there will be an extremely weird reference, even by this game's standards. So now that we have missed, we could pass through gates. And we could ride currents. Ooh. Oh. Oh. It's also around this point uh, that I decided to switch computers from my main desktop computer to my gaming laptop. Uh, for whatever reason, my gaming laptop actually runs this game better than my regular dedicated gaming PC. I don't know why. <laughs> what uh? What do you have in your PC versus your uh? Your laptop. My PC is good enough that it should be able to run a game for 2014. So anyway, here's the switch. It it looks it looks significantly better. And this is what I'll be using for the rest of the LP. Actually, that does look a lot better. Yeah, that's pretty clean. All right, so this is another optional rat puzzle. Again, I have to make sure that everyone is is with me before I before I proceed. It's <laughs> it's got to be. I I just got to do it. <laughs> and over here he is a pillar of sacrifice. Sacrifice a rat. I guess we can do it this way, too. That's fine. All right. Slit your wrist. Come on, you drama queen. Come on. Where's the Hot Topic t-shirt DLC? We all know that you want. <laughs> but yeah, there's uh, it's not all the Pillar of Sacrifices have, uh, uh, have Kleidos nails. Some of them have... Uh, upgrades to your relics. All right, now we can go. 
Yeah, I I was very surprised by how cute I found the rats on my my LP playthrough of this game. And this paint box is very strangely placed since there's overlap between the context sensitive prompts. Yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't just move it over a little bit. Oh, oh, the prompt for the rats. Yeah. I, I thought maybe there was a prompt to jump down or something. You could miss the box. Anyway, we're going to get a new gameplay mechanic. It's these landmines. Uh, these are not normal landmines. They are special vampire landmines. And I tried to get caught in these landmines, but they missed me. So I had to go out of my way to get caught by them. You know, when you said vampire landmines, I thought they were going to explode into like Sunny D or something. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like flashbangs, like solar flare grenades or something. <coughs> That was anticlimactic. These guys do not like Nuala and the Miserable. Yeah, that's uh that's an epitaph. I I do not want to be the descendants of Nuala and the Miserable who have to live with this uh who have to live with this memorial proudly <laughs> displayed in Victory Plaza for all to shame my great 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 grandfather. So from now on, riot police will deploy landmines around the battlefield. Mines deployed and and uh, there are several different ways to neutralize landmines. We'll be going over them. So uh, the the easiest way is to just use a void deck or do a shadow dagger, but that doesn't neutralize them for very long. It just uh, uh, it just temporarily paralyzes them for maybe just a couple of seconds at most. Also, you could use Mist to dodge gunfire. Uh, with the Riot Police, it doesn't work very well because they have automatic machine gun fire. I also wanted to test whether uh, Riot Police were uh, had landmines or whether they were damaged by landmines. But even though you could clearly see that it sparked their armor... Uh, enemies are immune to landmines. Well, that Aww. sucks. Yeah, disappointed. Disappointing, yeah. Wait, could you like throw a dishonored vampire into one, or because they're vampire landmines, or are they specifically no, Dracula mines? It's, it, they are they are anti Dracula landmines, unfortunately. Damn. So the other way to deal with landmines more effective way is to use the void dagger which uh it, it does not permanently disable them but it does disable them for much longer than the shadow dagger does kind of a clever mechanic a little bit disappointed in the payoff it's a lot more interesting when you're actually fighting riot police at the same time. Not so much when you're dealing with them in the aftermath. Yeah, I suppose. So Whirlwind is the completely game-breaking move uh, for the Void uh, void Sword, which I'm going to avoid using at any cost. Because <laughs> uh, it, it's just it just makes the game completely boring because it's so overpowered. Uh, Vengeful Cut is a very interesting move, which I'm going to show off in a little bit. And we're also going to get an upgrade to the sustained whip. 
And also, uh, we're going to upgrade the guillotine so that it has that fancy finisher at the end. Ooh, nice. And you can still cancel out of that finisher, just like you did. So Vengeful Cut is a theoretically infinite move. You can hold down Y, but it's not as game-breaking as you'd think, because the, the, it doesn't actually hit uh, until the end of its animation. Hmm. So you, it's good for crowd control, but not much else. Also, I, I ran into an interesting bug here. There's no enemies around, but I hit a barrel. And the battle music started playing. Uh-huh. And it would continue playing for like the next five minutes of gameplay, even though I encountered no enemies. I mean, show that barrel who's boss, I guess? Yeah. I guess the choir is really impressed by how much I kicked that barrel's ass. <laughs> yeah, I get it. You're you're very impressed. That's that's nice. It's still going. Are there it's enemies like going. above you or something on the No, the I, I've up? killed all the I've killed all the enemies in this map. Anyway, elevator time. Yeah, and the the that's the same battle music from uh, for the parking lot. Now it starts to make sense. Hmm. This is where this is where the battle music is supposed to start, is when you counter these enemies. But it, it's continued over from the previous uh, previous part. Also, you may have noticed that orange flash there. Uh, there are now civilians with grenade launchers. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, it's not a fun time. And also enemies that could just shoot piles of goo at you that uh, carried over. Um, if I remember correctly, I think there are like two different types of grenades that, you know, red, red grenades have the, the delayed launch while the orange grenades uh, are instant, but I don't remember exactly. I'll have to look it up in my guide. I may be overthinking it. So this particular circuit breaker puzzle is one of my least favorite parts of the game, especially if you're going for collectibles. Okay, so that's what this is, the puzzle room. Yes. It's more of a timing puzzle, but you'll see what I mean. Also, if I remember correctly, this room has some of the most interesting lore from those scrolls. So it's at least interesting in that. And you'll remember that I said that uh, that uh, there is a particular move that was very useful against uh, shotgun enemies, and that's missed. You can't shoot the air after all. Yeah, you cannot shoot the air. It's not, not, it's not quite the uh, Kamaki reversal, but it'll do. Just did not want to pick that up. <laughs> okay, so here we're going to learn more about uh, what Lord Zobek has been up to. So he is basically... Zobek has basically been uh, an extreme philanthropist over the last several hundred years, essentially giving himself a good name uh, into Castlevania City. 
and he is pretending to be the descendant of himself, essentially. So he is he is like Zobek, the identical descendant of himself, Zobek. Well, that's pretty good cover story. I'll actually give him that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Also, the battle music's still going. So this is supposed to be one really long gauntlet then, huh? No, it's a glitch. Nope. Ow. Oh. I, I would find this maddening. At, at this point, I realized that, okay, there were more enemies coming in. I think at some point I just used the dragon talisman because I just don't want to deal with the rest of this crap. So we've turned the circuit breaker back on, but it's an old circuit breaker and it's on a timer. So we have to go through these elevators. I mean, that's just how circuit breakers worked in, you know, 2006. <laughs> yes, the... Uh uh, everyone knows that uh, electricity was it became significantly advanced after the uh, 2008 financial crash. <laughs> we had to do something to jumpstart the economy. That's what's meant by sustainable power and policy, you know. <laughs> It's at, I think it's, yeah, I think it's around here where I just decide, screw this. I got to use the talisman, which will kill every enemy in this map. Chitty demon. Thanks, Mikhail. <laughs> And of course, because of the glitch, the battle music is still going, even though all the enemies are dead. <laughs> okay, so I mentioned before there was vampire romance in this world. This is it. And it was not about Dracula. It was about Alucard. Huh. I just, I love the idea that a a vampire romance film becomes po a politically charged and highly controversial film because the church has so much control and power over, gov over the government of this universe. And also the fact that because the church is so restrictive on, you know, on media, that vampire romance as a concept does not become a thing until 1982. I'm just imagining the, uh, the, 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 uh, the backlash of Twilight getting published in this, in this world. <laughs> I kind of want to see Alucard the vampire or like a snippet of it. Like something like a, you see like this old you know, bashed up <laughs> cinema that's playing like a small reel of Alucard the vampire. And I want to see it as like this, like really low budget B movie romance schlock. And I would sit there and watch the entire thing. But no, Mercury Steam, you, you denied me this th this one opportunity of humor. You do understand it was 1982. It would have been Tom Hanks' as Alucard. Oh, yeah, I could I could buy that. <laughs> You're saying that's a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be on to something there. I was wrong. <laughs> Okay, so you're you're saying that uh, in this universe, the, uh, the this universe's version of Sleepless in Seattle is Alucard the Vampire. Yes. Okay, I'm I'm even more on board now. I want to see that. <laughs> you just have to hold out for season four of the animated series. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
Come on, don't let us down. I wonder what the real Alucard thought of his betrayal. And whether, and whether, <laughs> and, 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 and whether he ate Tom Hanks afterward. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, I was really frustrated from having gone through all of that shit. I, I ran all the way back up because it, it's only two minutes um, to uh, to go from the, the the bottom of the circuit breaker all the way to the top again. Because while we were while we were speculating over uh, Tom Hanks vampire fan fiction, uh, <laughs> I was supposed to be pointing out how much this part sucks. But just trust me, it sucks. See, at this point, I had forgotten completely about this puzzle. So I was wondering what the hell I was supposed to do. My first instinct was going over to this shadow portal and then just waiting by the door for a scientist to come out and then sneaking in through the door when the scientist walked in. Because it looks like you could sneak right through there. Because it seems like that was that that's where your eye is being drawn. But there's an invisible wall. What? I, I'm pushing the analog stick forward. That's not what you're supposed to do. So what you're meant to do is restore your appearance back there and then wait for another scientist, possess him, and go in through there. That was, that would have been my next guess, but why even have the rat section at all? I know, it's it's strange. Thankfully, this the scientist has no peripheral vision. And also that the Golgoth guard cannot see past his flashlight. And he can't hear the screams of pain and agony. Yeah. <laughs> as he's slowly losing... Uh, all sense of self. Doesn't notice the guy showing up for work drunk. Access granted. Come on through. Injection in the neck.
What shit have you injected me with, you insect? Your own antidote, my dear. When your possession disappears, you are going to tell us where the acolytes are. Something's wrong. The possession isn't disappearing. <laughs> You should crawl out of your hiding place. Though the dragon still lives. We thought you dead. No matter. You want to know where the acolytes are? Behold before you a child of Satan! <laughs> ah! My father fears you. He fears you may ruin his plan. I cannot allow that. Nothing will stand in the way of his return. You see, my father takes this all very personal. As soon far out, you and your lackey have a date with hell. And my father will know that it was I, his beloved daughter, who sent you there. Lucifer in Omnio Meo Negotia, Renaftet in Illos, Resquem, May Resistant Vintidae! She gone. Nowhere. the other acolytes. I will cast a spell of confusion around her to block any signals. All right, so we're gonna. This is our final fight against Volkova. I really like this fight. I also like the fact that you can pretty much just outright dodge most of her unblockable attacks using Mist, which makes it really satisfying when you can get a good combo string going against her. Yeah, that's pretty rad, actually. You will throw your spirit at my father's feet. Also, sometimes she does that, and in that case, you throw a chaos bomb into her mouth, and it does some extra damage. Is she the fucking gaping demon from, uh, Dark Souls? I mean, she just might be. Distant cousin. Also, that tongue that tongue attack she does is, uh, one of those gra- similar to one of those grab attacks that Carmilla did, which is inescapable without using mist. You couldn't have waited to use the bathroom or done it sooner? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to point out here that uh, Volkova's electricity is similar to Carmilla's. 
Also, that tornado attack she does, which uh, is pretty rare, but that is also that also counts as a grab attack where you have to use mist. Interesting. There's also that weird tongue, which is a, like a jump rope attack, basically. From now on, uh, every boss will have at least one, like, grab attack. Something for the mist to do during the yeah, battle, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, something that is, yeah, something something that's mist exclusive. Just gotta justify its inclusion. Yeah. For today, I will deliver unto you your dragon. Actually, those, uh, th those mist dodges are reminding me a lot of Bayonetta, like, when you, uh, when you don't quite do the perfect dodge, but you still get, get like, the bat dodge. I forget what it's called. Yeah. Oh, uh, Crow Within? Is that it? Bat Within, I think? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was Bat Within. Crow Within is something else. Um, but the, uh, the thing is that you'll notice that, that Mist still works on a cooldown timer. You can't use it forever. Oh, okay. So you, you can rely on it for a couple of attacks, but then eventually you need to dodge or wait for it to re or wait for it to regenerate. So yeah, kind of go again going kind of back to Bayonetta where it's like you can dodge like four times in a row, but then you get like a cooldown animation or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Except if you're playing a Jean where you can dodge as much as you want. <laughs> It's strange to think that we, we've made Tom Hanks as some sort of one hit wonder hack in this <laughs> alternate universe. <laughs> one one hit wonder hack who had the the role of a lifetime and then got eaten. <laughs> <laughs> That's this universe's version of the Razzies, by the way. Uh, what, you just get eaten by, by Dracula and or Alucard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we didn't like your film. <laughs> Which would make the, the Razzies the most powerful, uh, b uh, the most power powerful movie awards show in the history of the world, really. Because there are severe Everyone consequences for Everyone wants to do winning. a good job because they fear the results. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most terrifying night of the year. The Razzie Awards. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It's called the Razzies because the blood looks like raspberry jam. Oh. 
If anyone's watching in the cut commentary, I'm sorry. This joke makes no sense. Go back and watch the uncut commentary. It'll all the, the context will be there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>